praise the wonderful name of the Lord. Can we worship Him? Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Lord. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. I believe in the name of Jesus. Yes, I believe that He is the miracle worker, He is the healer. Hallelujah. He is the one that we find salvation in. We find life and more abundantly in the wonderful name of Jesus. And I know that this week is, um, this Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. And we're excited about what God is going to be doing across the nation and also in other countries across the world. Hallelujah. We're looking for a Holy Ghost explosion. Praise God. And uh, this week I was... Um, just thinking about this uh, service and you know what message to preach and and I tried different things and it just didn't, didn't seem to be working. Felt like the enemy was you know trying to uh, interfere and in everything that I was trying to, to do and and um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. But um, I just want to you know the, the Lord did come through. He seemed to be on one theme and so I'm going to preach on this one thing today, and that is the word of faith, the word of faith. Uh, the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 8, Romans chapter 10, verse 8, but what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart, that is, the word of faith, which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart, that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whoso, Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew or Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But then shall they call on him and whom they have not believed. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Praise the Lord. And so, uh, again, we're going to be talking about this word of faith this morning. Praise the Lord. I know that there are many that will have their um, doctrinal uh, discussions about, you know, what is faith and what isn't faith. And but we're just going to, you know, speak what the Lord has laid on our hearts today. Praise God. Let's all just praise, praise the Lord right now. We thank you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you, Lord, um, our hearts, our minds, our spirit, our soul to you so that, Lord, that we will be able to understand what you were trying to commune to each and every one of us, that you will minister to us right now. Help us, Lord, to, to see the truth of your word. And, Lord, that, let that truth begin to be activated within us. Hallelujah, so that we will begin to believe even more unto you as you take us from this dimension to another. In Jesus' wonderful name, in Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God.
book of Romans is an important book to the church. As one scholar said, it is that it's an insightful book. It's an eye-opener book. It's not based on status, but it's based on grace. Every word that you hear in the book of Romans will be speaking about grace. We find that Romans announces that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. What this means is it's more than graphite, or the Greek word for the written word. It's more than just a written word. It's more than logos, which is the living word, the thought, the intent of what God, you know, imagined or he verbal expressed of his will. We find in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 11, but in, it's, you know, much more than just the fullness of his being, hallelujah, into the flesh of, you know, Christ. It's much more than just that, you know, the fullness of the Godhead in him bodily, Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9. We find that these truths that are associated to with the context that includes repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, they're associated with that. Receiving the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues as it gives the utterance. But people, hallelujah, just need more than just content. People need more than just truth. People need more, hallelujah, just you know, uh, just a, a theology, what people really need, hallelujah, is to know that this works, right. hallelujah. This generation has enough doctors, we find that they have enough doctors that, you know, ministers to the needs of the flesh. Anytime we're sick, we go to a doctor. Uh, this generation has more than enough psychiatrists, has more than enough psychologists, it has more than enough philosophers who deal with the soul. That's what they do. They deal with the soul. This generation needs more than a guru. Somebody that, you know, deals mostly with the uh, spirit of man or the subconscious of man. Hallelujah. They know, hallelujah, that what they want to know more than anything else is that they want to hear what is preached from the pulpit, that it works. Hallelujah. This generation needs what Paul is writing about here in verse 8. Hallelujah, that the word is near you. Hallelujah, that this thing really does work. You need to understand, hallelujah, that this is near you. The word near comes from the same verb that means to squeeze or to throttle. In other words, we are dealing with the active word of God. When we allow him to squeeze this container, this container that holds our soul and our spirit, Spirit, hallelujah, that holds the wonderful power of the Spirit of God that's within us, hallelujah, when we allow Him to squeeze it, hallelujah, so that rhema, which is the act of word, the word, hallelujah, that is poured into us, this word, hallelujah, will begin to uh, be activated, it is this rhema that's squeezing that this generation is hungry and searching for. They want something more yeah. than just coming to church. They want something more than just something that we talk about. They want to know if this is really real. Hallelujah. And so we find that this generation does not need some more stale words being preached to them. This generation needs more than just words of religion or tradition. Hallelujah. They don't want to hear what used to be. They don't want to really hear what we used to do. Hallelujah. The church needs God to squeeze out so that rhema will begin to pour out. Hallelujah. We need something, hallelujah, that will begin to activate when we use the words of testimony. Come on, church. Right. Hallelujah. Faith is very significant to each and every one of us. It's significant. Our faith concept, our faith needs, hallelujah, to line up with the times that we are living in. We find that Jesus told the religious leaders of his day, he says, I want you to understand something, you men, you major in the minors. 
you're majoring in the minors. Sometimes the church majors in the minors. They, you know, it's the non-essential things that they get so caught up in, and they forget the essential things. They get so caught up in the legalism, the tradition, but neglect the weightier matters of the of faith. What is faith? We find that in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, that it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. Hallelujah. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. Hallelujah. And that he is rewarder of those who seek him diligently. Right. I don't know about you, but I just didn't come to church just to hear a word from the Lord. But I have come, hallelujah, to seek him. I, I want to know that he is activated in my life. Amen. Praise God. I want to feel the power of God. A lot of times we talk about Pentecost. And we talk about the importance of being filled with the power of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. You know, it's part of our salvation. We find that there's a lot of times there's a lot of uh, red, uh, religious rhetoric about faith. We talk about faith, this is what it is, and, and this is how we need to follow it. We hear a lot of people talk about naming it and claiming it. Come on. They talk about naming and claiming it. What happens, though, when we name something, we name it, we believe it, that's going to happen, but it doesn't come to pass. What does it do now? What happens at that moment? You hear a lot of people say, I tried to, you know, to have faith. I tried to pray unto God, and it didn't come to pass. So what happens? The thing is that we need to ask is, do we still have faith in God? No matter what we prayed about, do we still have faith in God? Can we still have faith when the forces of hell comes against us? When we feel that the evil day has approached and that everything is out of control. You know, things are just going crazy in our life. And if we, you know, things are happening that we don't understand. You know, do we still have faith in God? Hallelujah. This is where I was at this past week. You know, the last few weeks we've been talking about, you know, the, the uh, armor of God and, and what we need to put on, you know, to fend against the enemy. And all of a sudden, on, on Thursday, I began to feel the weight of, you know, the enemy coming against me. It was like it was, you know, a big cast. You know, my faith was, began to get low on, you know, by Friday, I was, you know, so low to the point that, you know, I just felt like, what's the, you know, what's the point in doing anything? You know, nobody wants to hear the word of God. You know, I, I would be on the treadmill and I was watching, you know, a, a, a certain evangelist on TV and he had a big crowd and people were laughing and, and, and they were enjoying what he was saying. And, and, and I said, you know, wouldn't that be nice to, you know, to be able to preach, you know, to thousands of people? And so here I was, you know, just kind of, you know, a little bit feeling sorry for me. I was having a pity party, and nobody else, you know, seemed to want to be a part of it. I went home, and, and I opened the door, and the first thing I got was, you know, uh, 120 pounds of fur ball, you know, just kind of growling at me. You know, that's, that's the way I felt. I felt like John the Baptist in prison. You know, John was here. He was preaching you know, the word of repentance. He was talking about, you know, that he that is coming, you know, is greater than he. And, and that that he was not even worthy to un untie his shoes, so to speak. And so here he was, he was in prison. And so he sent his disciples to Jesus and he says, I know my day is almost over. You know, and I'm just kind of disturbed at the moment. And, and I, I just want to know one thing. Are you the one? Or do we look for another? And we find that Jesus said to, you know, to uh, the disciples. This is what Jesus was reminding me. He said to John's disciples. He said, there is no greater man than he. He says, go tell John the things you have heard and seen. That the blind can see now. The lame can walk. These were important to what John needed to know. The leopards are cleansed. The deaf can hear. The dead are raised up. 
But I want you to understand, but more importantly than all of that, John, that the gospel is being preached to the poor. Hallelujah. What John wanted to know was this the act of word of God that he was preaching? Was this the act of word, hallelujah, that was going through the countryside and healing and ministering at the people? And did he want to know if you know this word was more than just you know something for the the uh, the elitists, but this word, hallelujah, that was reaching down to the poor, that they could also hear it and begin to have a changed life. There was active in them, hallelujah. So here I was, like John, I needed proof. I needed support to my conviction and my faith. That the things I cannot see is the vehicle, hallelujah, it's the vehicle to the vision of the things I hope for. Hallelujah. I cannot see it at the moment, but faith tells me, hallelujah, to keep on believing. I keep on moving. Keep on, you know, dreaming. Hallelujah. That God is about ready to do something, you know, greater than what I could ever ask or think. Come on. Hallelujah. So the word of faith. Hallelujah. Helps our eyes to see what we cannot see. It helps us to touch that we cannot touch at the moment. It, it helps us to taste the blessing before it happens. Hallelujah. Our faith can smell, hallelujah, what is cooking in the oven. Hallelujah. Oh, that smells good, and I can't wait to sink my teeth into it. Hallelujah. Faith can put the squeeze, uh, excuse me, can put the squeeze on any situation that you're in right now. Hallelujah. That's what the, the, the ram up does that squeezes you. Hallelujah. Paul is not dealing with cultural differences. Hallelujah. He's dealing with cultural differences, I'm sorry. The Greeks had culture. They had art. They had philosophy. We find that the Jewish people had an elitist attitude. They looked at the Gentiles and thought to themselves, they are nothing but pagans. They're nothing but dogs. They serve empty gods. They don't understand the true living God. And so they had this attitude that, you know, we are the chosen people of God. And so Paul says, hallelujah, that God does not look at your status. He doesn't look at your culture. He doesn't care about anything else. But understand one thing, that Jesus is Lord of all. He's the Lord over the Jews, and he's the Lord over the Greeks. Hallelujah. Right. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's God over everything. Right. Oh. And on the day of Pentecost, we find that Peter boldly preached this word, Rama, with confidence. Hallelujah. Right. After the cloven tongue, hallelujah, after rushing like a mighty wind, as he came out and people looked and said, what meaneth this? As they were speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Oh, Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost with boldness and confidence. But he still had an elitist attitude. Right. Even though he preached it. He, he confidently preached from the book of the prophet Joel. He, but it was slanted unto the Jews a little bit. It was just a little bit slanted. Peter's mentality thought, process as many as the Lord God shall call, but it only included the Jews. Come on. It only included the Jews. See, what happened was that eight years later, after Pentecost, eight years later, Peter was, you know, they were to preach this gospel to the uttermost parts of the world. They were to receive the power on high in Jerusalem. Then they were to be witnesses there, Samaritan, and the other most part. But Peter had a splendid idea. It was to the Jews. And so what happened was that God came to him and he said, you know, in Acts chapter 10, you know the story. You know, all of a sudden God said, you know, Peter, I want you to understand something. You know, I said that you are to preach the whole gospel to the world. But somehow you believe that belief uh, is only for a certain amount of people. Because I see the results. You know, you know, the truth is in the pudding. 
You don't really believe what I am saying. So we find, hallelujah, that God says, I want you to go to a certain Gentile's home, and I want you to begin to, you know, speak to them. And so we find that Peter went into the house of Cornelius, and he began to, you know, talk about the good things that Christ had done when he was on earth. When he was ministering, he said, he went around doing good things. And as he was speaking about the, you know, the living word, Christ, as he was speaking about what he was doing, all of a sudden, Rana began to move. Hallelujah. There was activity in that home. And they began to speak in tongues. Hallelujah. As the Spirit gave the utterance. They felt something. Hallelujah. People need to hear what we have to say. But they want to hear the rhythm of God. Hallelujah. And so what happened was that the Jews that was with them became very astonished. Hallelujah. Oh, we want Rama. It's a lie. Hallelujah. To be in our lives. But how do we know it's a lie? We look at the results. We look at the results. See, you know, this is one way, you know, much like I said to you, know, Lord, am I really preaching, you know, the way that you want me to preach? And all of a sudden what happened was is that God began to take my memory to, you know, certain things. He said, you know, people are being touched. I've had people say, you know, you know, you're the best kept secret sometimes. You know, I want to be more than just a, you know, kept secret. I remember one time two girls when we were, you know, the Holy Ghost was moving in the service and all of a sudden they were just on their way to town to get some ice cream. And what happened was is that they, something pulled them in, the remnant of God began to pull them in. Hallelujah. And they came into the parking lot and they, and they opened up the doors and they came in. They said they felt something. Hallelujah. And that's why they came to be a part of this service. So God began to show this. And I said, well, God, where are they now? And so God began to show me in this message today. He made it clear, hallelujah, what he really wanted. When Paul was right to the hub of the nations of the world at that time, the church of Rome. See, what Paul did was that he revisited the message that Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. <laughs> he revisited the prophecy of Joel that this promise is unto you, and your children, and your sons and daughters. He revisited it. They shall speak in tongues, and they, they will. Begin to see old men with green dreams, and young men will have visions. And your young daughters will begin to prophesy. Begin to revisit that. And so what happened was that he completes what Peter overlooked. He uses enthusiasm and conviction when he begins to speak here in Romans chapter 10. See, Peter said, Whosoever. Whosoever. But Paul said, it doesn't matter who they are. Come on. Peter you know, said, it was only for us. But Paul said, it doesn't matter who you are. See, sometimes we think it's for the, you know, the leaders in our organization. Or, you know, we, we, we tend to put people on a pedestal and say, we can't reach those heights. But Paul is saying, it doesn't matter where you came from, where you're born. Hallelujah. What matters is that you believe, hallelujah, that the word of God, hallelujah, that comes into your life becomes activated. That's what, who, it doesn't matter, hallelujah, it's for who ever you are. And so we find that Paul brings the gospel to its simple form. Hallelujah. You cannot call on the Lord because they do not believe, he says. See, the reason why people don't believe is because they do. They just don't believe in God. Am I getting through to you? Come on. And so, he realizes that the world doesn't believe. 
The world goes on as they always have. They believe in their philosophies and their other gods. And he said the reason why they don't believe is because they don't have a preacher. They need, hallelujah, to hear a sound. They need to hear the active word of God preached to them. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. This generation needs, you know, the correct message. They need to hear something, hallelujah, that is correct. Not some watered down version. Not something that will, you know, you know, not hurt their feelings. They need something that won't, you know, more than just, you know, oh, I don't want to step on your toes. You know, I, you know, I just don't want to joke with you. I'll tell you. I just want you all to know that we are friends and that God cares about you. Yes, God cares about you. But you need to understand, hallelujah, if you want the active word of God in your heart, Hallelujah. Then you need to be in right standing with God. And that means you need to repent of your sins. Hallelujah. You need to be baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus. And when you're baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus, then you will come out of the water calling upon his name so that you will be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, church. Hallelujah. I don't know what you, but I want not just something that, you know, just to feel good about myself, but I want to Something that tells me, hallelujah, that I got God living within me. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. I need something that is activated. Hallelujah. And when it's activated to us, then it allows the righteousness of God to be revealed to us. A lot of times, you know, what we want to do is we want to clean up people before they receive the Holy Ghost. But what we need to do is just preach the word and watch the Holy Ghost do its best work. Come on, church. Watch the Holy Ghost do its best work. That's what happened on the day of Pentecost. They didn't come in out, you know, saying that this is what we have to do first before we receive it. They just were pricked in their heart when Peter preached the message. Hallelujah. But this same Jesus whom you crucified is now both Lord and Christ. Hallelujah. Come on. And when they heard that message, they were pressed in their heart. That's what we want. It's the active word of God, the manifestation of God. Hallelujah. Begin to work within their lives and begins to prick them. Hallelujah. We don't just need you know, something that sounds good. We need something that is real. Hallelujah. I'm thankful that somebody preached to me one day about the real gospel and what it takes. Hallelujah. To have Jesus within my heart uh, and in my spirit. I didn't mean theology. Hallelujah. I didn't mean, you know, somebody's philosophy or concept. Hallelujah. What I needed was that the living word begin to be activated in my heart. And when uh, it was activated, hallelujah.
Come on, this passes cultural line. Hallelujah. This is more than just a lifestyle. It's, hallelujah. It's a culture. It's called Pentecost. And it's real. Come on. Hallelujah. This is what Paul was speaking about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we got to believe. I said we got to believe. Hallelujah. We got to believe. We got to confess it from our mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, come on! Hallelujah. Whoa! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Does faith tell you? Hallelujah! You can't Whoa. see it at the moment, but you're going to see the blind eyes being opened. Oh, you may not see it right now, but deaf ears, hallelujah, are going to be on stock. You can't see it right now, but the lame are going to walk. You can't Whoa. see it right now, but the Holy Ghost is going to move across Crockett County. You can't see it right now, but the Holy Ghost is moving. Hallelujah, across Tennessee. You can't see it right now, but the Holy Ghost is moving into Arkansas and Missouri. Hallelujah, it's going down to Mississippi. It's going to, hallelujah, to North Carolina and South Carolina and Georgia. And it's going forth, hallelujah, across America, into Canada. Hallelujah, to Mexico. Hallelujah, to Central America. If we don't preach this gospel, then God will raise somebody else up. Hallelujah, belief in the realm of God, the manifestations of God. Hallelujah, come on. It's time that we believe this. Oh, Get a hold of that. And then they'll squeeze you. They'll squeeze you. This is what it means. My cup is full. Your boy is running over. I mean, squeeze. I mean, squeeze. Hallelujah, I can't take it anymore. Oh, my, my, my. Come on. Oh, God. Hallelujah, Joe Ashwax is in the text meeting. Says, and somebody says, I need prayer. Hallelujah, God squeezes him. Hallelujah. And the anointing of the Spirit of God begins to be activated. And he touches somebody. And they're healed. Come on. Hallelujah! I said, 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 I said,